Welcome to ECE 302. This is lecture 3.8 on geometric random variables. I am Professor Stanley Chen. This is the outline of our course. We are now in chapter 3 and then we are in section 3.8. Geometric random variables are the third random variables that we are going to study in this course. It is a variation of the Bernoulli random variable and the problem is a small change in terms of the probability of success. So to introduce this random variable I would like to first talk about a very simple experiment. Suppose you have a coin and you have a probability of half getting a head and you have a probability of half uh, getting a tail. We ask, what is the probability of eventually getting a head if you keep flipping the coin? So what does it mean? Suppose I flip a coin once and if I get a head, then great, right? So you're done with this experiment. But if you flip a coin and you get a tail, then we are not successful yet so we flip the coin again. In this case, we will need to flip the coin twice in order to get ahead. But this is not always going to happen. It could be that we need to flip the coin three times because the, two, the first two times we're getting a tail until the third time we're getting ahead. Or in some worst case, you, you need to flip the coin four times where the first three are tail and then the last one, you eventually got a head. So we want to study the probability of getting a head after many, many failures. So you can see that if this is a fair coin, then uh, the probability of getting a head after a failure, this is just one half, and then it will go to one fourth, and then it will go to one eighth, it will want to go to uh, 1 16th. Why? Because uh, to get a tail, you have half of the probability. Uh, to get a head, you have another half of the probability. And so the product of these two will give you 1 fourth. Uh, uh, same for this 1 eighth and 1 16th. Now, if you try to uh, keep track of these numbers, then these numbers they will form the probability mass. And we can draw the probability mass function according to these numbers. And then you can see that uh, I will start with uh, 1 half, and then I will go to 1 fourth, uh, 1 eighth, uh, 1 sixteenth, and so on. So this would define a PMF. And this PMF is what we call the geometric random variable. Now, of course, it, the geometric random variable doesn't need to be one half. You can have uh, one third, one ninth, uh, one twenty seventh, and so on. Uh, this series is what we call the geometric series. So, how do we define the geometric random variable? The geometric random variable, in terms of the mathematical definition, it follows this: uh, we have this probability mass function. Uh, Px of k, where k is the uh, running index that you are looking at, and this k has to go from 1 to all the way to infinity. Uh, this probability uh, is 1 minus p to the power k minus 1, and then p to the power 1. You are getting k minus 1 uh, of 1 minus p because you have k minus 1 failures. So how do we visualize this? You have tail, you have tail, you have tail, and then you have a head, okay? And so here uh, you, can, you have k equals to 4, so all together you have 4 trials, and then the first 3, uh, this is k minus 1, you have failure, and then the last one, you have success. So you have k minus 1 and 1. Uh, and this k minus 1 uh, for 1 minus p, goes to all these failures, and then the last one is your success. Now note that in this geometric random variable, the order matters, because you have to fail k minus 1 times 
and then you get ahead uh, to become this probability mass. Okay. All right. So uh, the notation for the geometric random variable uh, is is this. We we would just write uh, x uh, with a little snake. We write geometric, uh, and this p, which stands for uh, the uh, a parameter of this geometric random variable. So this p uh, can be any number between zero and one. Okay. And so the interpretation is what I just said that you have 1 minus p to the power k minus 1 this stands for the k minus 1 failures and then you have p, this is the final success the shape of the uh, geometric random variable in terms of its probability mass function follows this uh, you have, uh, in this case, we have p equals to uh, 1 half and so you have 1 half, this is 0 0.25 uh, this is 0 0.125 and so on Okay, so uh, if you look at this diagram, you realize that uh, if you have a fair coin, then you have half a chance of getting ahead uh, right after one coin flip. Uh, after two coin flips, uh, it, it, the probability will go down to uh, 0 0.25 and then 0 0.125. It eventually, it, it is unlikely that you need to flip the coin nine times in order to get a success. Okay, um, so how do we calculate the probability? Uh, here I'm just showing you the first few uh, examples. So let's say the probability is uh, p is one half, and we ask what is the probability that you will you will you will finally succeed after one attempt at what that's one half, okay? Because you flip the coin once and then you get success. Uh, now what is the probability of success after getting uh, using two attempts? Well, the first attempt will give you one half and then the second attempt will give you one-fourth, so you sum them up, you get 0 0.75. Uh, for three attempts, you sum these three numbers up, and then you get 0 0.875. Four attempts, you get 0 0.9375. All right? Okay, so this is the geometric random variable, and the calculation is sort of um, straightforward, as long as you know how to do the geometric series, the summations. The shape of the geometric random variable is, uh, follows this. Uh, if uh, the p is uh, 0 0.5, uh, then you have the geometric series that uh, goes down monotonically. Now, if I make the p extremely uh, small, well, this is actually not too small, it's 0 0.25, then you can see that the, the, the geometric random variable, uh, that decay rate becomes slower versus if I have p equals to 0.9, then the decay rate becomes a lot faster. So that's the property of the geometric random variable. The cumulative distribution function, or the CDF, of the geometric random variable is given by this formula. Now you may wonder, how do we calculate this, uh, the CDF? Why does it follow this formula? Well, we know that the, the, the CDF of a random variable is defined as the probability that x is less than or equals to k. All right, and then now what is this x less than or equals to k? And this is just the summation of the px of your l, where l will go from 1 up to k. Okay, and then now you can plug in the numbers here. So you have uh, uh, p uh, of 1 minus p in times uh, to the power L minus 1, and then we have P, and then we have summation L going from 1 to K, uh, that would give us um, the, uh, 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 the summation, and then we have P, we can pull out uh, this P, right, so this P can come out, and then you have the summation uh, L going from 1 to K, uh, and then you have 1 minus P to the power L minus 1. Now, this summation can be simplified as follows. Uh, you have this uh, L minus 1, and so we can do a very simple substitution. How about N equals to L minus 1? Then the summation will go from N equals to 0 all the way to K minus 1, and then you have 1 minus P to the power M. Okay, And this number uh, should be um, um, pretty uh, easy to calculate. Right, so because this is really the finite uh, sum, so you have p going here, and then um, uh, you have uh, this one minus uh, this one minus p, and then the denominator will be one minus this one minus p, 
um, to the power um, <coughs> to the power what the power the power is k. Okay, all right. So now let's do some simplification. So this simplification would be that uh, the denominator becomes p. The numerator is one minus uh, one minus p to the power k. And you can see that um, this term and that term will got cancelled, and so you were left with uh, this equation, which is exactly uh, this quantity here. Okay, so this is the geometric random variable, and we have shown is uh, CDF, and the CDF is given by uh, this equation. So I would encourage you to go home and just try on a computer and plot this CDF out and see how does it look like. Now, uh, let's also talk about the moments of the geometric random variable. The moment, the, the expectation, and the uh, second moment, the variance of the geometric random variable is summarized as here. Um, uh, I'm not going to go into details of this calculation because you can read this from the uh, ebook. Uh, or uh, I will actually encourage you to do this exercise at home. Uh, to give you a hint, uh, that expectation of x is just the summation of k times px of k, and then you can plug it, you can plug in this um, um, PMF, and then you can calculate uh, this uh, expectation by yourself. So finally, I want to comment on the uh, variance. So if you, if you look at the variance, the variance is given by this equation. We ask, uh, when will the variance of the geometric random variable be maximized? Okay, or in other words, when we will have the maximum variance when, when you can choose different p's? Uh, it turns out that the variance is maximized when p goes to zero. And here's the diagram. So the x-axis of this plot is the p, and then the y-axis of this diagram is the variance. Okay, I'm plotting in the log scale to show that this number can actually become very, very big. Um, okay, so why is it the case? Well, if you recall the shape of the PMF, uh, if you have a uh, um, PMF where P equals to 0 0.25, uh, this PMF is actually very, very flat. In contrast, if your PMF uh, with it has a P equals to 0 0.9, uh, this number actually goes down to 0 very, very quickly. Okay, so this is a rapid decay. This one doesn't really decay uh, that much. And so you can imagine that as p goes to zero, uh, this geometric random variable will become almost flat. And so the variance will be maximized. All right, so uh, this is the uh, a very quick overview of the geometric random variable. I will encourage you to take a look at the ebook and try out different exercises in, in our book. If you have any question, let me know. Um, post a question on Piazza, and we will be very happy to help you. Thank you very much.